talking. Um, okay, thanks very much indeed. Uh, let me say this is a work in progress. Um, and it is likely to become the uh, opening chapter of uh, the book I'm writing for Palgrave on uh, ministerial leadership. Uh, so if you can go to slide two. OK, uh, I, I realize that in trying to be too clever around the title of this presentation, uh, I may have given the impression I thought political leadership can be constrict constricted to that of uh, the leadership of elected politicians. Uh, I generally take a much broader view of political leadership than that. Here are two articulate political leaders, of course. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you. And I take it over overall, I take the approach that politics is ordinary. We're all politicians in the spaces that we uh, inhabit, as I, I put in uh, my book on the Bosch Devolution referendum back in 1999. OK, next slide. Um, so overall, what I'm arguing in, in this paper is that Political leadership studies tend to focus on the leader, and that can be a president or it can be a prime minister. Autobiographical accounts by politicians focus on their own agency, therefore researchers have to factor in structural issues. Democratic politics tends to reinforce a hero heroic model of leadership, and a language of leadership as understood in business public service is not routinely used by, for example, government ministers when talking about their own roles. And I'm using a leadership as practice lens uh, to uncover the dimensions of ministerial leadership and refocus discussion on their leadership rather than on the leader. Uh, this can't displace the hero leadership model, but it can temper it. Okay, move to the next slide. Um, ministerial leadership is actually pretty much under-researched in political science, uh, in political studies generally, let me say. Uh, and despite the way in which we talked about leadership in public services in the last 30 years, it's actually, it's very rare for ministers to talk around their own leadership. Um, I won't repeat those other points. Let me move to the next slide. Ministers rarely talk about their leadership. Well, you know, prime ministers and first ministers, I can tell you from experience, do not like, generally like other ministers talking about leadership. It's often interpreted as a threat. And we know that would-be leaders have to play down uh, their interest, uh, as I'm sure that Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss are doing at the moment. There is no vacancy, they will say. Um, but politicians of our ministers generally think that they are leading on policy rather than leading government departments. Uh, and when they talk about leaders or leadership in public services, they are usually talking about other people, usually those with a delivery responsibility. And there's a very limited understanding of system leadership. OK, next slide, please. So here's an example, the you know Fred Greenstein work on political leadership, which focuses largely on uh, specific traits of political leaders. Uh, and on the right, there's an example there from a very good academic in Scotland, James Mitchell, talking about Nicholas Sturgeon's uh, leadership in the context of COVID-19 using the Greenstein uh, traits. Uh, next slide, please. Um, political autobiography focuses very much on the agency of politicians. Uh, and as uh, Martin Smith and others have said, because of that tendency to focus on agency, researchers uh, have to focus on structural constraints. Let's move swiftly on, I think. And the popular biography, of course, reinforces the great man uh, myth. Uh, Boris Johnson's book on Churchill, How One Man Made History. Uh, all this, of course, has been to a large extent debunked by Archie Brown in his book, The Myth of the Strong Leader. Let's move on. But the great man theory survives today, as Andrew Rawnsley points out, talking about Boris Johnson last year in, in that column where he says Johnson is a believer in the great man theory. OK, next slide. But there are there are a number of structural reasons why democratic politics reinforces this heroic model. Politicians have to be selected to fight seats. They are elected, of course, in order to govern. Party leaders, once elected, have the power to hire and fire. Party management arrangements such as whipping incentivize loyalty to the leader. Uh, the accountability and blame allocation process reinforces the notion of personal responsibility uh, 
uh, that the concept that one person is responsible overall uh, and one person is a leader. And we know that political lives, of course, are constrained by time. And that itself is a factor. OK, next slide, please. Yet the conception of ministerial leadership as a set of acts arguably goes back to uh, to James McGregor Burns. And Jean, I know, has written about uh, Burns' role in uh, thinking about political leadership. Um, but the minister may need to fall back on bargaining exchange and trade-offs, says McGregor Burns. Uh, and as uh, Jennifer Lees Marshmont and Ayn Smolovich Jones have written, Burns actually starts to develop this concept of leadership as a relationship and collective, uh, relational and collective concept. Okay, let's move on. Why leadership is practice? Well, it seems to me we are operating in an environment here where uh, very little is uh, conceived in the language of leadership by politicians. So we need to study their own practice uh, if we are to get inside uh, their own the, their own ways of leading. Uh, and leadership practice, I think, leadership as practice does lend a very useful uh, lens for, 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 for working our way through this. OK, next slide. And so I talk about ministering, which I call, which is to me the practice of ministerial leadership. And again, I can draw on political science work here, Rod Rhodes' work, um, where he talks about, where he analyzes a number of government departments uh, and the role of ministers in his book, Everyday Life in British Government, talking about practice as a, a set of actions, but not really interpreting it in a leadership concept. Okay, can we move on again? My data or source material is going to be largely drawn from the, the uh, Institute for Government's Ministers Reflect series. Uh, and I've interviewed Peter Riddell, who was the director of the Institute for Government when this was um, conceived as a project. Uh, and there are now 120 interviews. Peter, of course, a very re respected former senior political correspondent. Next slide, please. Um, there are 120 interviews. There's not a straightforward party balance. Uh, there's not a clear balance with devolved administrations, although they have now interviewed ministers from devolved administrations. So uh, this work I'm doing will be supplemented from further interviews I've conducted, further reading, five years of teaching on a particular module on ministerial leadership, and a little bit of autoethnography, as well as documentary sources. Next slide, please. Um, so what I'm arguing is leadership as practice lens inserts a sense of collective experience, being part of an enduring system, one amongst many, part of a team, if you like, a non-heroic concept of ministering. And I've set out uh, nine elements of the ministerial role there. Can we go to the next slide where I try to express this as a Gantt chart? If I could uh, describe, if I could actually draw a Gantt chart, that's roughly what it would look like. Uh, ministerial career starts with preparing and learning to be a minister, moves into becoming, learning, performing, practicing, deciding. Subsequently, later in life, in the, as a minister, stewarding perhaps, then exiting and then reflecting. Okay, next slide. I'm going to take um, four elements essentially: preparing, forming, exiting, and reflecting. Next slide. Preparing to become a minister. Are ministers trained? Well, as Jean has, has written herself, politicians have largely been socialised in a Westminster system or local equivalent, which takes learning on the job and serving your time for granted. People bring to ministerial roles on the whole their prior experience. Nobody teaches them to be ministers. And indeed, even politicians from within the same party and within the same administration sometimes disagree on what the valuable skills are that help them become ministers. Tony Blair says serving time in Parliament is not necessarily the, uh, the, the skill, the, the, the experience that equips you to run a department. On the other hand, Alistair Darling says, you know, his most valuable experience was 10 years of being a backbencher uh, in the House of Commons as a huge training ground. So it's it's contested. Next slide, please. Of course, when ministers become ministers, uh, and this is a where leadership in practice uh, focus is, is immensely helpful, I think, uh, a number of artifacts demonstrate to, to the fact that they are now ministers. They get the title of minister. They have a ministerial office and a private office. Uh, they have uh, departmental passes. Uh, they get a red box or more likely in the devolved administrations, a ministerial iPad. They are present on the front benches. They get briefing folders and submissions. They may have use of a ministerial car. They have to reply to correspondence. 
They may meet in the cabinet room around a cabinet table or make use of a governmental press conference room. So there are, as uh, Bridget Carroll notes, you know, practice approach argues that we have uh, identity because of uh, artifacts with which we are associated. Well, ministers are very clearly associated with a series of artifacts. Next slide, please. OK, I'm not going to run through these quotes, but they are all quote. You won't be able to read them probably on the screen, but they're all quotes from ministers about the fact that they are performing from the very moment of becoming ministers. Uh, and I've got, I think, Lord Davis of Abbasoc at the top, who talks about having been chairman of a bank on a Friday and within a week he's answering questions in the House of Lords uh, without any training or induction. OK, next slide, please. And there are a number of spaces of ministerial performance. I've, I've put them all under the under the letter C, chamber, committee, the departmental or, or ministerial court of the private office, the cabinet, uh, media and social media channels, uh, what I call the circuit, going out to outreach uh, to different organisations, conference, constituency, and to a degree in the ministerial car. Okay, next slide. Um, ministers exit, not sometimes their own choosing, more often not of their own choosing. And one of the things that happens immediately is that the artifacts are taken away. This is Oliver Letwin from his book, uh, Hearts and Minds. With great solicitude, sensitivity and efficiency, they take back your passes and your keys and arrange for your books and personal effects to be delivered from the centre of government to your office in the Mother of Parliaments. So there's a very definite ritualised process almost of taking away those artefacts. Next slide, please. And then they reflect, perhaps. Some of them have. Some of them have been formally asked to reflect, to reflect, to think about what it is ministers should do to prepare themselves. Again, another quote from Lord Davis of Abbasoc. Uh, I use him particularly because, of course, he's got external experience of leadership in, in industry. Um, but he's saying there quite rightly, you don't know how long you've got as a minister. Think about what it is you want to leave behind. OK, next slide. Um, so discussion elements would be democratic politics imposes structural reasons why the heroic model persists. Looking through a leadership as practice lens allows us to uh, think of this as a collective experience, part of an enduring system. But my observations from the research are that few ministers unprompted talk about leading as such. Next slide, please. There might be further questions we could interrogate. Why is ministerial leadership so little discussed? Are there differences between the parties and how they approach this question? Is collective leadership really possible in government? Uh, and, you know, if you wanted to get nerdy about it, you could ask, has the Institute for Government Work improved ministerial performance? Question and answer on the right is my uh, interview with P Peter Riddell, where uh, I, I raised this point with him about the whole issue of ministers leading departments not really being interrogated in the Institute for Government Work, which he uh, agrees with. Next slide, please. So conclusions. Leadership often means different things in politics and public service. You have, if you like, a, a contest between the logic of politics and the logic of practice. The political logic reinforces notion of heroic leadership. Practice logic gives us a means of challenging that. It would be good to have more reflective political leadership leaders, but politicians may only see that after they leave office. OK, that's uh, that's the presentation. Thank you so much, Leighton. Thank you so much for perfect timing. You're saving the session, really, with the, the prompt presentation. And it was a fascinating one, absolutely interesting approach to uh, to, to, to leadership, ministerial leadership, uh, particularly. Do we have any questions from uh, from the audience at, by now? Uh, if uh, or maybe I can just begin with my question. So uh, when I've been listening to your presentation, you particularly highlighted that the heroic uh, leadership is here to stay and uh, I was thinking about the um, the issue of mediatization of politics and one of the channels of uh, practicing the leadership particularly uh, you highlighted again was uh, social media and other media channels uh, with which um, uh, ministers do engage so I wanted to ask how do you think the the mediatization of the politics and particularly the media aspect in this leadership as practice uh, is, is contributing maybe to uh, to the need of establishing this type of leadership, heroic leadership, particularly because 
this is the logic of media of telling the stories and focusing on yeah. ourselves. I mean, I think that's a good question. I think there is a, you know, there, one can answer this in a number of ways, really. Um, I think that the media's need for a uh, t to tell a story means that they want to talk about individuals. So if there's a crisis, there has to be somebody to blame. Um, so, you know, that reinforces that sense of there is one person responsible. Um, and the opposition, of course, will want will reinforce that. You know, if there's a crisis, they will want to blame an individual. They'll be want to be able to uh, to hunt after a particular minister. Um, the social media, um, particularly Facebook channels, effectively have given politicians the opposite the opportunity um, to communicate more directly to people in an unmediated way. Um, and that's going to be something that, you know, we're, we, we're, well, we've seen a lot of in recent years, we're going to see more of. Um, but that then, that then allows uh, for a more populist and heroic uh, approach in, in itself, because it's coming uh, through a particular forum, and it's usually an individual's politician's forum. So if you look at Rishi Sunak's presence on Facebook in the course of COVID-19, you'll see a very branded, very constructive, very created personality around that. Uh, so I think that the danger is social media will actually lend itself to more personalization, more heroic uh, stuff. Um, I saw a question in the chat coming in from Keith. Shall I just quickly answer that one? He asked about yes. time and its impact on ministers. I think I think this is a really interesting question. I hope to explore it a bit in the book because it seems to me time, you know, operates on ministers in a number of different ways. There's daily time, if you like, imposed by the diary and diary management, time management in that sense is critical. There's also the concept of time as legacy, which, you know, Lord Davis's comment points up to. Um, you, your time as a minister is going to be limited. What is it you want to achieve? How long are you going to... Uh, how long are you going to spend on a particular project? It can take, you know, time to develop a policy. Maybe if you need legislation, then to take the legislation through uh, and then to see it being implemented. And it's not until the policy is implemented, as we know, that we really know what's happening. And the late Tessa Jowell says in one of her interviews for the Institute for Government, you know, it's so rare in politics to see a project through from the beginning uh, to the end. And I think that time dimension operates as a very binding structure uh, on ministerial life and the way in which, and uh, probably therefore on the identity of ministers as well. I mean, I could say more about this, but I want to respect the, the lack of time. Thank you. Jean, your question, please. Um, yes, uh, thanks. I think that's um, really interesting and I'm going to look forward to reading and purchasing the book uh, in due course. And also outside this, I'll, uh, I'd like to just chat to you about some work that we did with ministers that may be helpful too, that we never published. Um, but I think this thing about leadership and the wariness of the term leadership, I think in some ways flows right back to you know, political philosophy in a way, doesn't it, that um, elected politicians are elected by a constituency award or whatever, and they're meant to be the representatives of the people. So how far should they lead and how far should they actually follow is quite an important um, philosophical question. So no wonder they're a bit um, leery about the idea of um, uh, leadership. But I think if you talk to them, and you, doubtless you've done this, if you talk to them about um, shaping or mobilising or, uh, you know, words uh, which are about what leadership does, then I think they're, they're quite happy with that. It's just the word leadership is a bit of a bugbear to them, in, in my experience. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I, I think that's fair. Um, and I, and I, agree, I agree with that. But I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do in this is look more narrowly at min leaders as ministers, if you like, political leaders as yeah. ministers. So that brings into focus that concept of leading a department. Yeah. Now, of course, this then brings another uh, contradiction into place, of course, because they don't technically lead the department. The permanent secretary in Whitehall leads the department or in the devolved administrations, the relevant director of the particular area of policy is the is the leaders. But you know, if you were to look at what they do, 
they are the actions that they take, which is why you know the, the leadership as practice lens, I think is really helpful. And I should on this point, thank my colleague who's on this call, I know Tracy Rosell from Cardiff Business School, who introduced me to the concept of leadership in, as practice. Um, it, if you look at what they do, you would say these are leadership actions. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so the, yeah. the fact that they don't articulate it is 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 right. And you give good reasons. There are also reasons, technical reasons they don't technically lead departments. But they also know that prime ministers and first ministers don't like other people talking about leadership. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole set of really interesting things that are on there. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to interrupt so rudely now, but unfortunately we're running out of time for this question. I want just to thank all the presenters for the brilliant presentations, which put a lot to the table to discuss the role of leadership in the very challenging context and the way how it evolves, how it changes, and particularly this relationship, which is very important for uh, particularly populist leadership emergence, the, the relationship between leading and following, which is really emerging in this new environment. Thank you all so much, and um, I hope you'll have a wonderful conference. Thank you.